Hello, everyone. I'm Alfred. That's Rafael Friedrich. It's finally 2023. I'm recording for the first time in a while. This is West of Loathing. Um, when I started my channel, I did not have a lot of cash on hand because I just bought a nice laptop. And granted, it's a laptop, so it's only as good as a laptop can be. But it is as good as a laptop could be. So, without a lot of cash, I played free games on my channel often, and this was one of them. Uh, or rather, the prequel to this game was Kingdom of Loathing. A little preamble here, but Kingdom of Loathing, for those who don't know, is a browser game that runs on almost anything because it has almost no graphics. It's not even animated. It doesn't even run on GIFs. Everything's a JPEG in the game. But it is a real legitimate full experience that you can play. It's a real actual RPG. And it's a lot of fun. So I named my guy Arizona Tex because that's what I name all my Western characters. In my ill-fated New Vegas playthrough, that's what I named my guy. Um, I wouldn't recommend going to watch my New Vegas playthrough. That's what I started last year with. It kind of just didn't go anywhere. Or was that two years ago? Damn. Um, but my Kingdom of Loathing playthrough is actually pretty good. I've never played Bean Singer before, so I'm going to do that. For those who have not played, my, uh, watch my Kingdom of Loathing. Uh, magic and cooking are intrinsically linked in Loathing, and the Bean Slinger is the master of both. So you actually, the magic classes in Loathing are the Sorcerer and the Pasta Mancer. Uh, so you cast different varieties of pasta-based spells. And because, you know, this is cowboys, we have, uh, beans. Goodbye, desk. Come here one last time. These are randomized. Um, this game has a lot of randomization in it. But that's fine. Hey, Russell, how you doing? Caw! I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Feed him a cricket. You grab a cricket from your cricket bag and feed it to Russell. He coos and appreciate he coos appreciatively and nestles your hand. Maybe it's time for you to leave too. You open your bedroom window, not pictured, and unlatch the door to Russell's cage. He winks, calls one last time, and flies to the west. Time to hit the trail. Presumably, this is the first wall, the second, the third, and then this would be the fourth. And presumably, Russell's cage is literally in the fourth wall. Stack the firewood for some XP. This hearth really puts the hearth in hearth and home. Gonna miss mom's cooking. You'll miss meals with the family. This is mom's pie safe. It keeps all of her pies safe. Um, I will say there is a bit of Kingdom of Loathing that hasn't aged. Not like bad, but like, it's just, you can tell it's old. The fact that it's a browser game for one is like, sorry, I don't want to stand around and talk here, but like, there's always something to read in this game, and as a result, it's kind of difficult to not talk. It's your kid brother's toy box. He loves stuff like this. Puzzle cube. One of your weird... One of the weird puzzles belonged to your kid's brother. Your brother had it most of the way solved, so you figure out the last couple moves. Hoorah. Lection is Gion Matricae. Philosophiae. Naturalis Principia Mathematicus. These are all randomized for either Latin, French, I think some of them are German. Yeah. Vorlesungen über Zedefrieri. So tidy. It's covered with weird diagrams and charts. No time to screw around in the woods. Head to the west. Your mom swells warmly as you approach. I'm leaving now, mom. We're gonna miss you, kiddo. Before you leave, I got you a present. Present? It's that book you wanted for Crimbo. I know you wanted early. I know it's early, but I like this because um, it's a this is a this is a thing that you can like. This is a way to pick something as a as a player, but it comes up logically and naturally in gameplay. The one about bartering. Oh boy, that's the one. Enjoy it. So be careful out there. Write us a letter when you can. I will, mom. Goodbye. Your father jabs morosely at the haystack. That hat doesn't fit you, Dad. I'll grow into it. It's time for me to leave. His lip curves a little. Listen, I want you to have this. It's your grandmother's favorite can of beans. Can of infinite beans. You'd think a can with infinite number of beans in it would be really exciting, but these beans are pretty terrible. It's pretty cool to carry. It's a pretty cool thing to carry around, though. This is an offhand item. Thanks, Dad. Good. Good luck out there. Be sure to say goodbye to your mother. I did. Thanks, Dad. Hey, a needle. I got a needle. 
You read the book cover to cover and learn, among other things, the cover price is too high. We got Dickerin. After you're done reading it, you use your newfound skills to punt it off on a wide-eyed route for 60 meat. For those who didn't watch uh, Kingdom of Loathing, meat is the money. Because in Loathing, everything has to like make sense in a in a weird backwards roundabout way. Everything needs to make sense. So like, obviously, there's no real reason for a monster in a JRPG to be carrying five dollars on it. Even if it's something like gold, there's no reason that a random wolf or a spider should have it on them. Even semi-civilized things like your typical like old school orc kind of wouldn't hold on to money unless it's like particularly sparkly. So in Loathing, the money is meat, because meat drops off of monsters. Your brother Rufus is standing, looking nervous. He's pretty good at looking nervous. And the puzzle, he starts fidgeting. Hey Rufus, time for me to head west. I still don't understand why you're leaving. He's got a point. Why are you going west anyway? This is another thing I love when you can characterize your guy. Just through dialogue. Because like a lot of times, dialogue options are just for a show. Uh, let me turn myself off here. That's Rufus. Sometimes dialogue, dialogue options are like straight up just for show. Um, and that's fine. But like, I like it when you can get something out of it for you. Like when you talk to a character and they say something because you picked a dialogue option. And that something informs your opinion on them. And then you have a special opinion that only you have because of the specific way that you talk to this person. I need to get off this stupid farm. Rufus, you know how much I hate it here. I can't stay. I gotta go where the action is. But it's so dangerous. 60% of the people who go to the West gets killed within a year. And that statistic is before the cows came home. I'll be okay. You worry about taking care of mom and dad? I'll be... I'll worry about me. Okay, if you say so. I still think it'd be dead by Crimbo. I'll miss you, Rufus. Okay. You punch him on the arm, playfully. Go West, young man? Yes. Crimbo is just the... Uh, loathing equivalent to Christmas. Um, and there's this there's this concept in in Kingdom of Loathing, the one of the melee classes, one of the two melee classes, is called Seal Clubber, based on the brutal real world tradition of clubbing seals to death. Riff Connor, the dialogue coach. Um, God, nothing like I need to use my natural accent. Uh, so, Seal Clubber, yeah. But in the Kingdom of Loathing universe, all seals are actually horrible demons. Uh, and they must be clubbed, making uh, the Seal Clubber not just like a barbarian from the cold north, like all the Skyrim guys or the guys in Game of Thrones or whatever, but also they're almost like a paladin because their anti seal tech makes them anti demon. Um, so for those who are not from the States, to do something until the cows come home mean that you do it for a while. The phrase has been repurposed as a pune or play on words here, as a cataclysmic demonic invasion. That's what the cows coming home means. Um, <laughs> so cows are devils if seals are demons. The bad news is you fell off the cart and got knocked out for a couple of hours. You got no ride, no meat, no prospects. The good news is you're in a town rather than a gulch. Not much of a town, though. The town of Boring Springs. A turnip. Increases your muscle, Mr. Chaldean Moxie, by one for the rest of the day. You have a stomach stat and a... Hey, buddy, where's the bar? 300 miles, too far to go on foot. You need a horse. You actually cannot run like a horse like crazy. You need to alternate running them really fast and then slowing them to a trot and then just giving them a pleasant little um, trot in order to make sure that they don't kill themselves through exhaustion. Mostly scabs from walking in all of those cacti. Even poked by so many cactuses, your body has built up an extra set of skin capillaries just to deal with the constant tiny puncture wounds. Um, I'm aware that I missed the book of Silly Walks, by the way. I don't intend to get it. I feel like everyone gets it. As you walk into the saloon, the crazy-eyed guy sitting to the left of the door shrieks and waves at you to get your attention. Hey, we sure had, dagnabbit! Well, uh, you can't drink it here without a hat saying proper. 
He points to the take a hat, leave a hat box next to the door. You look through the hat box and find a magic black Stetson. This looks like something you'd wear. I think this hat is based on your class. Uh, you grab the hat and put it on. Thanks, uh, Pete. Thanks, Pete. He gives you a friendly, if somewhat twitchy nod. Say, feller. You heading west? If you want some company, I'd be more than happy to come along. Just let me know. Uh, no pressure? All right, I'll keep it in mind. Thanks, Pete. Uh, yeah, our mysticality is two now. And we're wearing the barely enchanted hat that gives us one mysticality. These two are playing poker, or at least trying to. They keep looking back and forth from the hands to the how-to-play-poker card that came with their deck, biting their lips and concentrating uh, real hard. Can I play? They look at you nervously. Look, I have meat. Let's play. You put 20 meat on the table and sit down before they can say no. One of them shuffles the card sloppily and deals a new round. You get a pair of tens plus a two, a three, and a king, which is crap. Yeehaw, I'll bet 15 meat. They look at each other nervously and call your bet. Okay, read them and weep. You show your pair of tens plus two, three, king. The guy on the left has a full house, which is two jacks and three aces. And the guy on the right has somehow got a straight flush. Six, two through six in hearts. Outfox him. You explain that jacks are worth nine points each, giving the guy on the left a total of 21, and the, guy on the gal on the right, 20, and you're 25, plus a king. And the king is representative of King Ralph the Ninth, who the Western colonies revolt against because of unfair taxes, so they each owe an extra tax of 10 meat each. They nod understanding and push more meat across the table with you. You collect your winnings and stand up. They thank you for helping them learn the game. And we have more cash now. Zs. Presumably that's onomatopoeia for sleep. It's a spittoon. People spit into it. You, uh, know... Without even looking at it, that's disgusting. We will ignore it. I do not have interest in using a... In building this stink stat. Uh, you walk up to the bar and wait patiently for the bartender to notice you. While you're waiting, you see a sign taped to the back wall reading, Reward for lost mugs. 25 meet each. Howdy, cowboy. Howdy, barkeep. Name's Arizona. What brings you to our little backwater? Usual, came out west to make my fortune. Not having much luck, though. Any work around these parts? I'm gonna turn the music up a little. Uh, unfortunately, Boron Springs has more people in it than jobs. It's more of an errand town, if you catch my meaning. If you're looking for a real job, recommend catching the railroad up to Dirtwater. The railroad? Manfest Destiny Rail Company. From back east. They're trying to run a line of Frisco, having a heck, heck of a time doing so. Have it a Uh, and they're hiring. Oh, I reckon they're always hiring for something or another. Big company. Dirtwater. Dirtwater is interesting. It's far enough west it's more or less exempt from the rule of law, but not so far west that it's been burned to the ground by the damn cows. Lots of opportunity. Yep. If I were a young woman, I'd have probably head that way myself. You mentioned errands. Yeah, this forsaken burg's always falling apart one way or another. Hostler's needing help since he hurt his leg. That no count sheriff's good to say and have somebody doing his job for him. Well, I've got a goblin loose in the basement. Some cow pork from the gulch didn't wipe his boots off and got spores everywhere. I can handle a goblin. How much applies? I'll knock the basement door for you. You'll need this. Goblins grow from mold spores in uh, loathing. Nurse brand whiskey. Good for what ails you. I guess we never establish your drinking age. I forget what the rest of it is. Uh, I think it's good enough the legal drinking age here is tall enough to reach the bar. Boring Spring Gazette. April 20th, 1895. Copy of Boring Springs newspaper from six weeks ago, which also tells us that this is... End of May? Start of, start of June? The Goblin Shouts Briark. This is a reference to the 5th edition player's handbook where uh, they have little quotes next to the pictures and a picture of a goblin has Briark and a byline says that that's Goblin for I Surrender. So he is trying to surrender. And if you get a book that teaches you how to read Goblinese, you can actually read it. Weak Fungicide won't end your turn. It wields 25 damage to target, assuming the target's the goblin. The goblin has 25 hit points. I... Having dispatched the goblin, you pat yourself on the back for a job well done. Mr. Caldy level two. We got three XP as well. I tried to avoid having... Um, I try to avoid watching Let's Plays of a game if I'm going to Let's Play it myself. But I would love this game, and this isn't my first playthrough as well. Howdy. Howdy. Good to see you again, Arizona. Took care of that goblin. Thank you kindly. New Year's a stand-up fellow the moment you walked in. Here you go. Least I can do by way of thanks. Who's the fellow at the bar next to me? Might ask him yourself, seeing as he's right here. He won't bite you. Howdy, I'm Arizona. 
Howdy, Arizona. I'm Horace. It's all the same voice. I'm sorry. Uh, nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm the town hustler. Yeah, that, that'll that'll do it. Very nasally. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'm the town horse selling guy. Gotcha. How's that working out for you? Oh, those horses are just flying out the door. So business is booming. Nice. No, I mean the horses keep running away. I haven't hold, sold one in ages. Yeah. Is that why you're here drinking instead? Yep. And me being in here drinking instead of watching the horses is probably how they keep escaping. It's one of the ambitious circle things. Well, I'm in need of a horse. Do you have any left? Uh, one. Kind of a boring one, but it's got four legs and a back to sit on. Come see me at the stable. I'll be happy to show it to you. You already have a hat. What would you do with two? Hock it. Um, yeah, I try to avoid watching LPs of games that I'm going to LP myself because I don't want to duplicate effort and I don't want to copy somebody else's LP, even subconsciously. Sheriff. Alice something, MD, get lost. You approach the weird cactus man hype. Sorry. The thing is that I have seen LPs for this game, but I feel like I can do enough of an LP of my own that won't copy off, off of others, because I do want to be original with it. But I think I can do that. The thing is, is that I will not do stuff that I've seen other people do in LPs more than once. Um, Markiplier played this. I want to say Jacksepticeye played this. Possibly some other people. And at least more than one Hololive uh, member has played this. So I'm going to try to avoid doing things that I've seen in those LPs. Um... Because, you know, Hollow Live is a stream company, sometimes I'll just check in and see, oh my god, they're playing West of Loathing. Cool. And that's cool. Um, sorry, trying to think of what nothing's happening. Um, and I can see that, like, it seems to be pretty popular to put on the Sidley Walks to be a cow puncher. Um, some of them do Snake Oiler because uh, you get a lot of skills that way, and that lets you see more stuff in the game. Combat in this game is not that important, really, because you can get a lot of stuff to help you bypass it. Um, but, you know, skills let you get more dialogue and skills let you see more stuff in the game. So a lot of people like Snake Oiler for all the skills. Or, like, Cow Puncher because you punch cows and that's a fun idea. Howdy, Cactus Man. Howdy yourself. And the name's Bill. Cactus Bill. What happened to you, Bill? Well, to be honest, partner, I drank too much cactus beer and it turned me into a cactus. Doc Alice warned me this would happen, but I didn't listen. And that is why they call you Cactus Bill. No, that's just a coincidence. Does it hurt? Does what hurt? Oh. Uh, you know, being a cactus? Oh. <laughs> no. It's pretty nice. The natural fermentation process inside of the cactus keep me pretty drunk most of the time. I guess it's my boring. I bet. It wouldn't be so bad if I had something to read. You wouldn't have to have a newspaper or anything, would you? Give him the newspaper. Oh, much obliged, partner. Uh, let me see. What can I do to return the favor? Oh, my shovel. I left it behind the outhouse of the Ohio Mine. It's yours if you go and get it. I'm sure you'll find a use for it. Behind the outhouse or home mine. Thanks, Bill. Don't mention it. Can you just kind of stick that newspaper and put it on my face before you leave? <laughs> nope. You're not allowed in Topeka anymore, remember? Loose dirt. Probably something shovelable. 